Hello, my name is Christopher, and welcome back to the No Other Gospel channel. This is the program that endeavors to help fellow believers have a better understanding of biblical truth by exposing teachings that are not in line with the gospel and are contrary to God's word. Well, a few episodes ago, we did something on signs, signs in the church today, and it was titled Charismatic demand signs and if you haven't listened to that go back to that but what we talked about is how people are teaching that signs must follow uh, salvation that the gospel isn't truly fulfilled unless you're seeing signs and wonders and how we talked about that was a false gospel well today we're going to look at a passage along similar lines that talk about how signs don't prove that you're saved signs are not something that shows one salvation and this passage is pretty serious, I think. Um, you know, and there's passages like this all over the New Testament. It's in a few different places. We've talked about that when we've talked about signs in the past. One of the most glaring ones is Revelation 13, where it talks about the second beast and how the second beast is performing signs and wonders. So obviously the beast is not saved, it's not in the kingdom of God. And so anyone who performs signs and wonders, that doesn't necessarily mean that they are saved. That's not the passage we're looking at today. The passage we're looking at today is Matthew uh, 7. And I'm going to bring that up here. Let me bring up Matthew 7. And uh, interestingly, chapter 7 talks about judging. And people throw this all around a lot. And we've talked about this uh, before. This is not the section that we're going to talk about. So let's scroll down. They say, don't judge. You're not supposed to judge. Scripture commands us to test the spirits. We need to be on guard. In fact, let's go to the passage today right here we're going to start with uh, verse 15 beware of false prophets now i'm going to read the whole context here and then we're going to dig into a couple passages a couple of verses on today's topics about signs and wonders let's read this beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but outwardly inwardly are ravenous wolves you will recognize them by their fruits are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles so every healthy tree bears good fruit but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. Continuing, that's the context. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many uh, mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. And you know this part. Let's finish the passage, this section here, till verse 27. Everyone who then hears these words of mine and does not put them, um, and does, does them, will be a wise man who builds his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, but it did not fall because it had been found on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not and does not do them will be like a foolish man who builds his house in the sand and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against the house and that and it fell and great uh, was the fall of it so that's the full context the context here is false prophets like i said at the beginning we're going to talk about it's talking about false prophets it's talking about how it sneaks into churches it, they sneak into churches they hide their their sheep and wolves clothing we've talked about wolves before but we should be able to recognize them by their fruits. We should be able to recognize false prophets, false teachers by their fruits. Scripture warns, beware. Jesus warns, beware of false prophets. Why? Because there are false prophets. There are many false prophets. We're going to be warned and we're supposed to pay attention to them. So don't criticize people that are calling out prophecy today that is not in accordance with scripture that is not what god says that people are speaking for god saying they're speaking for god but they are not speaking out for god we need to call that out so um, and then building on that he goes on and this is the section we want to talk about today not everyone who says to me lord lord will enter the kingdom of heaven but the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven on that day many will say to me lord lord did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name do mighty works in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. This is a pretty shocking section. You know, it starts with people pleading, Lord, Lord. This is a plead for people. They are facing judgment. They are facing eternal judgment. They are shocked. They are surprised that this is befalling them, that this, what is about to happen, what is Jesus is about to say to them, which is shocking, 
uh, they're just like, Lord, Lord, what, what do you mean? And many, he says, many, many in the church, many churchgoers, people that are sitting next to you in the pew that are going to churches down the street from you, many are going to rely on three things. What are those three categories? One, prophecy. Now, prophecy uh, can include more than future predictions. We talked about this a long while ago. We're actually going to revisit prophecy again on this channel in a number of weeks. Uh, look at Romans 12, 6, I think. It talks about prophecy. Really, sometimes it just means preaching. It just says, you know, speaking the word, speaking the word of God. Not, not necessarily fresh revelation, not necessarily direct revelation, the word of God that we already have right here in front of us. The word of God, prophecy, just speaking out the word. Um, you know, unfortunately, this, is, these, this prophecy that we're seeing today, prophecy in air quotes that we're seeing today, looks nothing like biblical prophecy. But they say they're prophesying in his name. And then that's first. And then two, the, the second category is um, casting out demons, the deliverance ministry. Again, you're seeing deliverance ministries today that, um, that look nothing like the way demons were cast out in Scripture, the way Jesus, it's, it's totally foreign. It's not the same. Um, and and they're, they're based on false doctrines, these these d deliverance ministries today. But um, again, that's the second category. And the third category is wonders. So it's this general category maybe of, of miracles, of signs. You know, again, they are doing them in Jesus' name, prophesying in his name, delivering in his name, doing wonders in his name. Now, it's important to note here that Jesus doesn't go on to say they're not real prophecy or you didn't really cast out a demon or they weren't real wonders. They weren't real signs. He doesn't go on and refute that. He, that's not his argument here. He's not saying these weren't real. Um, so, you know, maybe it's safe to assume that these are real prophecies and these are real wonders. They're really casting out demons. Now, there's not to say there aren't false prophecy. Obviously, right at the beginning of this passage, let's go back. Beware of false prophets. They are certainly... There are certainly real prophets or real false prophecies. They're, they're all over the place today. You know, you just keep seeing them. The passage warns of that. So um, it's not that Jesus is refuting that. That's not his point. Um, his point is something different. Um, sometimes, so we're talking about a group of people that are saying, Lord, Lord, and yet they're going to be expelled from the kingdom. They are not included in the kingdom. So what is he saying? He's saying people are performing real prophecies, real miracles, and they are not going to heaven. That is what is going on in this passage. So people that are pagans are doing these signs and wonders, and yet that is not getting them into heaven. You know, we shouldn't be surprised by that. Like I said at the beginning, there are other passages that say people are performing signs and wonders even to, you know, deceive the elect. You know that passage. I referred to the Revelation passage. So we, we shouldn't be surprised that there are others besides Christians that are doing miracles and signs and wonders, things that will put people in awe and lead people astray, if that were possible. And so the conclusion here is... Um, is shocking, I think, of what's going on. You know, these people are are trying to claim their their deeds to get into heaven, and that's not going to get to them to heaven. If you know the gospel, you know that's true. So instead of saying that their prophecies are false or their wonders are fake, Jesus takes another course of action, and he's saying that these things are not getting you into heaven. What is he saying, though? Let's go back to the passage here. Verse 24, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. So amazingly, what is Jesus saying? He's saying we need to hear the words and we need to put them into practice, put them into practice. But we can conclude that prophecy is not putting them into practice. Casting out demons is not putting them into practice. Performing signs and wonders is not putting into practice. That's not what Jesus is looking for. That's not the obedience that he is looking for. That's not the proof of your salvation. That is not what he's looking for in a believer. Signs and wonders, going back to the beginning of the passage, using that terminology, signs and wonders are not the fruit of following Christ. 
that is not the logical next step. Contrary to what is being teached in many taught in many churches, that we need signs and wonders to prove our salvation, that is not what Jesus is teaching. There is a wholly different walking in step with the Spirit, a wholly different sanctification process, obedience process that Jesus is looking for, and it's not signs and wonders. That is not the fruit that he's looking for. Fruit uh, is different. That's not what he's looking for. This fruit of the Spirit is what he's looking for. Signs and wonders could be done by anybody. And unfortunately, you know, this could be shocking um, if we if we really understand that. This could be shocking to the charismatic church who keeps peddling this kind of thing. So what can we conclude then? Simply signs do not prove your salvation. Signs do not prove your salvation. If people who are not saved can perform wonders, then it logically follows that signs are not confirmation of being saved. They do not prove that anyone is saved or they're not saved. And even if people were performing or actually doing false prophecies and fake wonders, even if, even if that were the case in this passage, you know, the, con the similar conclusion can be, can be um, arrived at. Many people rely on their actions and not their faith to be saved. In other words, they believe in a works-based salvation. Jesus is combating a works-based salvation here. People thought that they could get into heaven because of all these amazing things that they did. They thought that was their ticket. They thought that was either their proof of their salvation or their ticket in. And Jesus says, depart from me. I never knew you because it's another gospel. People who are come to God with prophecy and signs and wonders do not come to God by grace alone. And that's how we need to come to God by grace alone. They think by doing these things in his name, every one of those three things in his name, it says in the passage, they think by doing these things in his name that that is proof of their salvation. And yet he clearly states he does not know them. So the church must stop pushing for signs and wonders to accompany the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ stands alone as our only means of salvation. It must not even be a test or a proof of the saving work in us because even the most evil have and will perform miraculous signs on this earth. Shocking conclusion. Thanks for joining me on this biblical quest for truth. As we stand strong through every wind and wave of teaching, please like, subscribe, and share. Till next time, may your life be governed by the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ each and every day. Amen.